Hi, welcome to the season of love, my friends. The season of aggressively clashing reds, pinks, and purples at your local grocery store. But we're not here to discuss the many sad excuses to call Valentine's Day a bad holiday just because you think you can't buy your friends candy to show you care. Oh my god, Cheryl, you bought me meatball bubblegum for Valentine's Day? Well. I appreciate the effort of trying to make me cheat my diet, but I'm straight. Thank you very much. Anyway, enough of that. I brought you back to my humble abode to share with you the wonderful world of Otome dating games. What is this Otome I speak of so nonchalantly? Well, I'm glad you asked, fellow simpleton. It's dating games targeted towards women. Not literally targeted, you get the idea. So, because the season of love was rapidly approaching, I had an idea. Let's make a tier list! And right on time, I get the unspecified virus that everyone likes, and I had to quarantine. And you know what quarantine means, right ladies? That's right. An extra time to sim for drawings of fictional men without interruption. So without further ado, I present to you my Otome dating game tier list of 2021. Alright, here's the ground rules. Expanding it to PC games will take way too long to handle in one video. I'm not personally interested in the mainstreamed, unseasoned mashed potatoes you call dating games. I prefer more fantastical plots. This is so I can rate it fairly. I cannot afford the luxuries of premium features and neither can a lot of people. It's only fair. First of all, why? Why does this exist? This either barely functions as a game or the characters leave me tearing my hair out in the middle of the night. Just Questions. Why would MC say that? What is going on? Why am I here? Why are the majority of suitors total burbs? Meaning, I wouldn't even touch these games with a 10-foot pole. The story usually leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and the suitors keep you awake at night, whether it be from their personalities or looks. The MC's personality is plainer than a bowl of wood shavings. Or the game is enjoyable if you basically set your wallet on fire. I can see that these games apply to a certain demographic, but personally, I'm not a fan. Whether it's due to the lack of actual game in the game, or I gotta pay to enjoy most aspects, sometimes it just doesn't sit right. But okay, this is definitely a guilty pleasure for some people, and I will respect that without judgment. This is for people who are bored out of their minds. B tier includes those games that you haven't played yet. They're not as good as the higher-ups, but they provide enough entertainment to become a guilty pleasure. Sure, the story is sappy and cheesy, and MC's decisions aren't necessarily realistic, but whatever, I already played all the insert top-tier game here, so why not? If you want to start getting into the Otome world, the games on this tier are good to start with. They're good enough to set a proper standard for games worth playing later on your own, but nothing too crazy dramatic to where you're literally crying on your bed during a hot summer's night at 1am. Don't look at me. Hallelujah! Eureka! We found it! These games bring a lot to the table when it comes to the otome genre. They are usually the ones that shape the genre, or at least the good parts of it. The story is so good that you could definitely tell it to your friends and family, and I guarantee you they would be as emotionally invested as you are by the end of it. MC is an actually interesting character, not just a hollow shell you can put yourself in, but someone you can still relate to at a base level. So you say you don't like Twilight, eh? Well, I got a special one for you. Blood in Roses is your typical traditional tale of love between a human and a bunch of vampires. You know what, go ahead and throw in a couple werewolves while we're at it. There we go. You see, humans and monsters have separated from each other for about 500 years to avoid conflict coming to an agreement set under a contract made by the definitely not habitable castle sitting in the middle of the deep woods. Meet Mina, a witch slash hunter on the lookout for demons that attacked her village not too long ago. This castle turned hotel going by the name of Libra Sincera is the perfect place for MC to stumble upon and find the love of her life in, obviously. Oh, and by the way, for most routes you are bitten by a vampire and have a little less than 10 days to find a way to stay human or turn into a vampire. Of course, you have the choice to become an immortal vampire who never ages or, you know, stay human and live out the rest of your life. Of course you're gonna choose to be a vampire. Are you kidding? The game's called Blood and Roses for Pete's sake! Overall, it's your typical below average dating game with little sparks of actually good storytelling sandwiched in between. There's not a lot you can do while you're waiting for your tickets to regenerate. 
It makes a great game for when you want to take four hour long naps only to come back and read a grand total of 12 lines of dialogue. Moving on to another Twilight inspired fantasy, I give you Ikemen Vampire. Y'all are not ready for the absolute emotional roller coaster of a prologue I'm about to put you through. You ready? You sure? You sure? You sure you're ready for this? Damn, I'm just pulling your leg. Say hello to MC, a Japanese travel agent looking for things to put in her travel blog at the Louvre Museum. So, you're looking for the Mona Lisa, right? And suddenly, this extravagant lad clad in golden clothing from the 1800s blesses you with his presence. Okay, it's more like he picked up the earring you dropped, but same difference. Anyways, after creepily commenting on your human scent, he leaves. Which obviously means you gotta go check out the ominous, ancient-looking door that withholds the unholy caverns of antiques and haunted mirrors. So you keep walking down the hallway. And keep walking. Don't worry. You'll eventually pass out and find yourself in a 19th century mansion filled with the greatest men in history. And they're pretty historically accurate. The Louvre was built way before the 19th century, which makes this scenario even funnier. You're stuck here, and you got a month until you're able to return home. Oh, and did I mention they're all vampires? I'd say this game is a step up from the last one, providing some juicy, buttery voice acting for my ears to be cleansed over. Despite such a dramatic setup for the story, it's actually quite full of nothing but fluff most of the time. Which I get. I can see how th that can be intriguing. But for me, I prefer to earn my men through blood, sweat, tears, war, death. MC still needs some work though. You can definitely tell that they tried to make her an actual character in the prologue, but again, I feel like I'm playing the generic love interest to an actual protagonist. Scrumptious men though. I must warn you, this game is not for the faint of heart. Now I've seen hundreds of ads for this game all over the internet and it's probably the main reason why I never got around to playing it. Believe me, the ads are nothing like the actual game. Story-wise at least. You star is an apprentice of a magician slash fortune teller named Azra. You both run a magic shop in the middle of a kingdom where you use a fortune telling card deck called the Arcana. Because Azra is hyper aware of the up and coming inciting incident, he leaves the shop abruptly, leaving you with Julian, a retired doctor with a scandalous past. I mean, he did kind of break into the shop and force you to read his fortune, but hey, he's a love interest, so treat him with respect. His presence is short lived, since now you gotta take care of Nadia, the empress of all people. She just happens to stumble upon your shop with her emotional baggage, to which of course you respond by also reading her fortune, duh! She invites you to stay at the palace for a few days, since reading pictures on cards grants you the ability to see who really murdered her husband a year ago. I mean, are you really gonna pass up the opportunity to live with royalty just to fall in love with Julian, the one who did it? No! You're obviously gonna fall for the palace servant named Porta, who is also scheming against the Empress. Oops. The two of you will uncover the mysterious past of the palace. There's not much to say about the plot without getting into too much detail, but it's safe to say it's quite the setup. Thank you! It's an actual story with real tension and likable characters, including the MC. That's rare. There are some moments in there that genuinely feel like an animated series that I would watch. If you ever watched The Road to El Dorado, it's pretty similar in tone, and that's a good thing. My one complaint about this game would be the paid choices that are popping up all over the game, but you can easily avoid those and still get a good ending. I think. Hopefully. I didn't play all the way through. Okay, listen, I'm a Christian woman, right? So when I heard that there was a game based off dating the seven deadly sins, I wasn't entirely comfortable with the idea. But I decided to give the game a chance since it had such a big fan base and it's so popular. What could go wrong, right? Are you done? 
Basically, you're an exchange student at a prestigious school in the underworld fit for angels and demons. And for some reason, every year they pick two human students to trade places with demons. You are one of those people. The other's named Solomon. Wait, isn't Solomon from the Bible? Why do we have phones? And it may also exist in this universe. Whatever. Maybe it's just his descendant or something. Anyways, you got a year to uh, fall in love with one of the seven demon brothers. Apparently, Lucifer and Satan are two completely different people in this game, which is also interesting. One of the brothers, Mammon, is in charge of taking care of you. I wasn't expecting top quality biblical accuracy, but come on. It's just a little too campy for me. When I played through, I did see a few elements here and there seeping through the cracks of a typical dark academia story, like the school's secrets and the mysteries of the seven demon brothers. I just wish it went into a little more depth earlier because in order to unfold the story you gotta get past these levels. As you play on it gets progressively more difficult to the point that you have to wait days at a time and even spend a little money. Come on, you got spare change, right? The game is very persistent in asking for money. Every corner is slathered in open your wallet, which completely ruins the experience for me. I think this game sat in the back of my mind for years until it reappeared in my subconscious when I was writing the script for this video. I got an ad for it back in high school and all I did was look up a walkthrough of it and that was it. I never really played it, but now is my chance. It looked and sounded super cheesy, so I chose it because I thought it would be fun to actually find a bad game in the sea of decent to good quality games. The original app got combined into this much bigger app of stories similar to episode, but luckily I found the story I remembered looking into all those years ago. You're a housekeeper working at this fancy five star hotel. No, not that hotel, the other one, there you go. What can you do at this hotel? Oh, only the most extravagant parties the highest of quality rooms, and a top secret auction for thousands of millionaires to bid on illegal items and substances. And they all wear the same mask. On this faithful day, you run into a few strange looking men who happen to be your love interests, including a man who threatens your life because you witness his mafia gang at work. And in that whole fiasco, you end up damaging a stolen statue on accident. What do the organizers do? Well, obviously they package you up and casually sell you at the auction for $20 million. With that, you are brought to the penthouse and you meet the men who bought you. And guess what? You get to date one of them! I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm quite surprised by how stupid fun this game is. It's a silly story that makes zero sense, but if you turn your brain off, it's really entertaining. I don't know if it was the fast-paced story or the over-exaggerated characters that made it so enjoyable. All I know is that I didn't have to worry about the story slowing down for me to make room for zappy romance. My only complaint would be the paid choices, which you can easily avoid and still get a good ending. I'll admit, I was a little nervous when I thought of this game for the tier list. I've played Elix's games before, and they're showered in microtransactions, and I mean a lot. But hey, love is in the air, and love is all about giving the benefit of the doubt. So here we go. In this game, you're a producer for a TV show called Miracle Finder. Thanks to your dead dad, the ratings for the show have gone down after he passed it down to you. So now the funding behind the show is being pulled. It's up to you to bring your ratings and viewership back up before they pull the plug on you. Wait, that's not all of it. In this universe, there's this thing called Eva- Evo- Eve. They're basically quirks. Only a small population has these superhuman abilities, and they're called Evolvers. It turns out you and all four of your love interests are Evolvers. It's up to all of you to discover the mysteries behind Evil and discover who you really are and what your powers truly withhold while running a television show. Okay, wow, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how entertaining this game is without even spending a penny. I spent hours getting into the different aspects in gameplay. There was so much I could do without stopping, which may be a new addiction problem later, and the characters were all so entertaining to learn about. I can't get into too much about what the game is actually about without spoiling it, so I recommend that you guys go check it out yourselves. I highly recommend it. At this point, I couldn't tell if this game was good or not, 
or that my brain was so overwhelmed with romance that it literally turned to mush as soon as I pressed install. I was running out of Otome games to play, and I saw this ad, so I just, I got desperate, man. Picture this, middle class girl, feeding your cat, feeding your parents, except you weren't feeding them. They're dead, is what I'm saying. So then you look up at the night sky and see a blood red moon. No big deal. You fall asleep staring at it and wake up in an unfamiliar place at night. It's a castle? School? Mansion? I think? It's not explained very well. Then you meet these wackos that really, really want to touch you so they can enhance their magic wizard slash vampire powers. Or they're farting. I can't tell. After one of them kisses you without permission and another spits exposition, you wake up in a mysterious bedroom inside a wizard's school. I guess you have magic powers or something since now you are a C-rank student. C-ranks never advance to B or A ranks, while S ranks have their own personal assistants, and you get to fall in love with one of them. The whole prologue consists of you getting tugged around like a jar of frosting at a five-year-old's birthday party while something magic happens, blah blah blah. <sighs> I want to give this game a chance. I really do. But come on, this is just so sad. I don't understand anything from the prologue and I can barely tell each character apart. All I see is a bunch of immature perverts throwing you around like a rag doll. I like romance, damn it, but I want to get into the universe and characters before I'm forced to choose. It's way too complicated and cheesy to figure out what's going on, and I honestly can't tell if that's the game or just me being really stupid. I think it's both. Okay, cat, I know what I'm doing. You don't need to keep dragging me through this tutorial. You can tell the game is in its early stages, so I'd say give it a few years and pray that the writers know how to rewrite a prologue. After that, I was scrambling to find a better game than the last one. And I think I found it. It was recommended to me by an old college friend last year, and I never got around to playing it. Now was my chance. The story follows a teenage girl fighting for her life in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. Ever since this started, you've been jumping from house to house while trying to survive the night alone. Eventually, you come across an old convenience store where you're saved by a bunch of stunning young lads. They take you to their hideout in an abandoned high school. There, you meet even more of the game, to which they respond with hostility. This is not your typical Otome game where you're at the center of attention for the right reasons. Everyone is suspicious of you for intruding on their food supply and personal items. You gotta be the one to build that bond with each character throughout the game. Let me tell ya, this game is depressing. I haven't seen such a dark and overused genre be twisted into a romance visual novel and I love it! This feels like a breath of fresh air after all of the fantastical marshmallow fluff I put myself through for this video. Bravo! Again, there's paid choices, but I actually managed to play through the entire game within a day. Listen, I really wanted to give this game an S, but dear god, the ads are everywhere. And if you don't watch an ad or give them money, they will make sure you feel absolutely horrible about it. They implemented it into the story to make you feel awful for MC. I like men. I like drama. I ask for blood. I ask for war. I know these games are, for the most part, lighthearted fun. I wanted to play this game because of its overwhelming popularity, and I got curious. However, nothing prepared me for the beautiful nightmare that was this game. You are contacted by an unknown number in the middle of South Korea. They tell you they've found a lost phone, claiming it only has your number and an address. You're told to seek a secret undisclosed location, supposedly where the phone belongs. You arrive, triple-checking your surroundings as you come across a lone door to an apartment. The place seems pretty developed, so nothing came across as too suspicious. The unknown number texts again. A passcode for the padlock. How did they get that? Didn't they tell you they just found the number to your phone? You pay no mind as you enter the apartment unscathed. No one's here. Obviously there should be, right? It looks fully furnished. You look back down to the phone. It's suddenly flooded with dozens of messages flying in from five different strangers like a frivolous group chat. 
You have infiltrated the Mystic Messenger, and now you and the group of strangers must band together and bring back the parties that once were. You take Rika's place, the party planner who died years prior. Whew. Wow, I just... Wow, this game. Words cannot express how magnificent the storytelling is. The romance? That is merely just one element of this absolute masterpiece of a game. The characters, the mechanics, the story, the clever dialogue, the emails, the interaction. I have never felt such a close connection to fictional characters in my life. It feels just like you're in a real group conversation with a close group of friends, and the chat room opens in real time. There's a lot to this game. This is the closest thing to a real video game that I have to offer, and it requires a lot of precise thinking to get a good ending. This ain't your mother's dating game, I tell you what. You have to try this game at least once in your life. Thank you for joining me on this journey, my friends. Thankfully, I have fully recovered from COVID, and I am ready to step back into the world. Where am I? Don't know yet. MHA Season 5 comes out in March. So what did we learn during this adventure in quarantine? Probably nothing. But I gave you good suggestions on how to get invested into 2D men. Have a pleasant February. And go ahead and get whoever you want some sweets and a card. Because Valentine's Day is all about celebrating the relationships with the ones you truly care about. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.